hi it's grace welcome back to my channel i hope that you're all doing really really well will i ever film again in natural light who knows so i'm doing a january wrap up part one today i've read quite a few books um this month actually although three of the books that i've read i'm not going to talk about because they'll be coming up in a vlog on monday um, i'm gonna shake it up a bit you know be crazy and i'm gonna do them in order of like star rating lowest to highest never done that before you usually go in order but thought it might be interesting thankfully the lowest star rating that i've had so far this month is three stars which is still like good to me it means i really like i enjoyed a book i read promising young women by caroline o'donoghue um this had been on my tbr for a while i know leanne over at leanne rose absolutely loves it um i really like caroline o'donoghue the author as a journalist um and her podcast i really enjoy so this is a about a young woman called Jane who works um, in like a marketing advertising agency in London. She's in her mid twenties and at the start of the book, she breaks up with a long time boyfriend. I feel like that's often the kind of starting point is kind of a bit adrift. And basically she ends up kind of trying a bit more in her job and having an, a relationship with one of her married coworkers. And we see that kind of play out. So I really enjoyed the reading experience of this book. It was very quick to read. Um, I think I read it all in one night. It was really fun. I liked her kind of writing style. It was compelling, gripping. I, I like reading about, you know, similar characters to myself in terms of age and being a, a young woman. I thought that was quite interesting. So the book gets quite dark, which I really enjoyed. Um, it definitely looks at some kind of bigger themes specifically around mental illness abusive relationships being a woman in the workplace like this idea of promising young women is a massive part of the book there's also almost like an element of like it isn't a supernatural book whatsoever not at all but there's this sort of symbolism i guess around some of the darker things and reflecting the character's state of mind but i would have loved for that to be pushed even further we got a little bit of it towards the end and i really like that and actually i think that's a really interesting way to explore the themes of the book and so i would have liked to see that be pushed further um the reason it's a three i found some of the plot quite convenient um and just a little bit unrealistic so there was just a few Things that happened where I was a bit like, oh, okay. Nothing major, just like I say, little conveniences, little bits of predictability. But on the whole, I did really enjoy it. I think if you liked um, Ghosts by Dolly Alderton, you'd really enjoy this in terms of a young woman who is, I guess, dating, living in London, but also going through some kind of more difficult issues. So yeah, it was really fun. I actually want to read Caroline O'Donoghue's newest novel, the next one, um, because like I say, this one wasn't perfect for me, but I feel like... I could really really get on with her writing and I did think it was an interesting fun read. So the next three star book that I read I actually read on Scribd. My new toxic trait by the way is completely ignoring my entire physical TBR and just finding books on Scribd. I don't know what it is about it apart from the fact it's like shopping without spending money but I'm just constantly scrolling through Scribd and being like oh my god it's got that it's got that. So I read Bunny by Mona Award. I was really looking forward to reading this. Um, I've heard about it on booktube for quite a while it just sounded really up my street really weird i know jay from the bar and the bookcase it was one of his best books of the year i was actually gonna ask for it for my birthday and then i saw it on scribd and i was like "Ooh, delightful bunny is a kind of campus novel it's about a woman called samantha who goes to this extremely elite um university in new england and she has been accepted onto the creative writing program which is the basically the most prestigious creative writing program going and she's on it with five other girls who are known as the bunnies so they call themselves bunny so they'll be like hi bunny like are you okay bunny love you bunny all the time and they're kind of like perfect they're this click that samantha feels quite estranged from and yeah we basically explore her as she gets to know a bit more about these girls as they sort of try and pull her into their kind of life i don't want to say cult it is a bit of a cult book actually and um, like if you like cult books i think you'd like that aspect of it but yeah some weird stuff goes down it's extremely surreal extremely strange very violent a bit kind of confusing and i really liked all that like again i read this in a night if you're wondering how my social life's going obviously we're in lockdown that's why i've read like 10 books already this month so yeah i read it all in a night and i had like a blast it was a wild ride flew through it there's parts of it that i definitely enjoyed more so i loved all of the like culty bits and 
the kind of tension around these girls and the way that Samantha starts getting drawn into it. I thought that was all done really, really well. And I loved the kind of layer of social satire that I think Mona Awad was putting on about kind of creative writing, MFA as they call them in America programs. This idea of, you know, the way they would talk to each other in workshop and seminar and the way the professor would respond to things. It just felt like it was a really exaggerated um, version of what these creative writing programs can be like taken to the like extreme like horror levels uh, there was a great bit when they're talking about like what kind of boy they like um and one of them says like you know I was thinking about this and then they're like no I think you're veering into you know traditional tropes I think all the stuff around that was really really clever and like I said it was fun other parts of it I liked a bit less just because the more plotty it got particularly towards the second half of the book um and it was quite like high action plot it did read a bit more like YA not that there's anything wrong with that but yeah it was like very fast paced a lot going on around these very surreal like speculative ideas whereas personally I usually prefer like just these elements of unexplained um I mean a lot of it was still unexplained but you know what I mean like they're just kind of there rather than being a massive way of driving the plot these sort of like more surreal elements but I definitely had fun with it I think there's a lot to be admired about it I think Mona Awad's a really clever writer I definitely read more than her and I am a sucker for a campus novel and I am a sucker for a kind of cultish novel so yeah I really I did enjoy that as well okay going up to the 3.5 now I read Passing um, by Nella Larson also on script this has been on my radar for a while because I've read two books that are kind of inspired by Passing and um, The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett and um, Boy Snow Bird by Helen Oyemi. So I just really wanted to get to like the original text that's obviously been so influential um, in literature. And it's a, I don't know if, I'm not sure what the like technical definition for a classic is. This was published in like 1929. So it's, you know, getting onto like classic, modern classic. And when I said in my 2021 Reading Girls video, which I'll link below that, I wanted to really try and fall in love with a classic this year. Someone was like, you should read Passing. And I thought that was a great suggestion. Like I say, it'd been on my radar. So I read it, it's on script. I guess you'd maybe call it like a novella because it's only 150 pages. And it's basically about a woman called Irene who is a black woman, but uh, she is very light skinned. And she has a, she runs into one day a girl, a woman who she knew from childhood. They lived in the same building together. And this woman was mixed race and is now passing um as a white person and yeah it's like i say it's a short book so it's basically just about how meeting up with claire the woman who's passing after so many years like what that does to irene the difficult positions it puts her in all of the social questions around it at the time and you really follow irene quite closely as she struggles i guess with claire coming back into her life how she feels about it worried for the safety of claire worried for her own safety and like has to kind of wrestle with I guess her own ideas about her race and and how she feels about the concept of passing so it was really really interesting um I think in terms of yeah it's themes really interesting and as I say as this sort of starting point for an idea that's been explored in literature um it's very like character focused story there is a kind of twist at the end is that what or like a surprising moment at the end that I didn't see coming, which I enjoyed. I think it's only 3.5 just because it is so short um, and because it's a classic, I guess. It's just like a very well-contained sh short story, not short story, obviously. And so I did really enjoy it. Like I have no real complaints with it. It was so short, so digestible. And yeah, that was passing. Okay, getting up to the four stars now. I read as chosen um, by you all in my last week's video. I asked you what book I should read out of a stack of five or six, I think. Um, and you chose The Housekeeper and The Professor. Like overwhelmingly, people voted for The Housekeeper and The Professor by Yoko Ogawa. So I picked that up. And this was glorious. Like literally so great thank you so much if you recommended this to me because i actually loved it gave it four stars i think this is a brilliant book it's a very like short quirky book people in the comments have described it as like really charming which i would definitely agree with you follow a woman in japan who's a housekeeper um and she has a young son who's about 10 and she gets posted to various different jobs usually for a few months at a time she gets given a new job um with this maths professor who is very old and that he only has 80 minutes of memory he was in a car accident he was an extremely famous 
mathematician um like extremely a genius basically but he was in a car accident this is set in the 90s and i think this was in the 70s and he just can only retain 80 minutes of memory so he has ways of kind of reminding himself every 80 minutes what's going on he doesn't really leave the house much and it's just a really quiet story that explores our protagonist and her son's relationship with this professor as it develops. He obviously has an extreme passion for maths and her and her son become kind of more interested in it. Our protagonist especially gets kind of whipped up in the magic of maths and it's just the most gorgeous human story about three characters coming together and having a really profound moving relationship despite the I guess the boundary of the professor only having 80 minutes and yeah I just love it. I really like Yoko Ogawa's writing and it was just like sweet and sad um i really enjoyed all the stuff about maths in it i thought that was really interesting i don't usually read a lot about maths there was a lot about baseball as well again something i don't necessarily read about but it just all came together perfectly and it was a really touching just like warm story and again not very long i've been on such a short book hype um you'll know why if you watch this week's vlog but yeah i've been on a short hype book at the minute short book hype at the minute and yeah it was just so nice i would recommend this to so many people i really loved it the other four star book is wow no thank you by samantha irby i listened to this on audio although annoyingly i bought it on audible like with my credit and then found out that it's on script so you can listen to all of samantha irby's books you better have been in focus all of her books are on script so little tip for you if you're interested this is her kind of collection of personal essays. She has three, I think. This is her latest one, and I'll definitely be going back and reading the other two. They're just basically about her life. It covers a range of topics, really, but she's just so funny. They are humorous personal essays that look at, I'd say, like, modern life, really. Um, she talks about being in a relationship with a woman who has children when she didn't want children. She talks about trying to get ready to go on a night out when you're approaching 40. She touches on some of her health issues that she has around Crohn's and IBS. She talks about music that she loved in the 90s when she was growing up. Just a wealth of experiences um, and she definitely alludes to the harder things in life. She grew up extremely poor, her mum died, but they are definitely humorous essays. I've heard that Meaty is a little bit more serious, but these are meant to be funny and they are very like list based a lot of them she'll run through lists of things which i really enjoy that kind of um setup and yeah they did actually make me like laugh out loud multiple times i think my favorite one i really liked the one when she was talking about food um i think that might have been in the children one but my favorite was when she was talking about like making new friends as an adult um and yeah it just I think she's got such a keen observational eye. Um, like I say, she's obviously very naturally funny. She's had a very interesting life. And I think her perspective on things as a black woman, as a fat woman, as a woman in a lesbian relationship, as a woman who has a chronic illness, she just has a really interesting perspective on things. She feels so relatable when you're listening to her. It sounds like you're just listening to a friend. She's very unashamedly open about things. She doesn't try and pretend she has this perfect life. She's very self self deprecating. Yeah, they're just so good. Um, perfect for audio, I think, because she narrates it herself and just having it on in the background when I'm like in the shower doing my makeup, cooking. I just loved it. It was really, felt really um kind of light. Again, I've been, for some reason, on a lighter more heartwarming more i don't know uplifting refreshing book hype post the first book that i read this month um and yeah this was perfect like i say i'm definitely gonna go and read the other two listen to the other two of her books on scribd because i just think they're great and exactly what everyone needs in january and then the one five star book that i've read so far this month a little life by hanya yanagahara this is the first book that I read this month um, and I have a whole reading vlog about it. So I would encourage you if you want my thoughts to go and watch that or if you want to see me literally sobbing then go and check that out. I will sum up by saying, I mean, I gave it five stars. I think this is an incredibly powerful book. I think I can understand why a lot of people wouldn't enjoy it, wouldn't want to pick it up because it's incredibly bleak. It is, it airs on the side of emotional manipulation. But for me personally, I connected to the characters so much. I felt for them. Like the way I got so upset is only a reflection of how well I think Yanagahara constructs this world and these characters. I also think there's a lot of love in this book, which is my favorite thing about it. A lot of friendship, there's humor, um, there's bits that aren't kind of traumatizing because I think she just does such a good job of 
of sketching real life and authentic characters and authentic conversations. I love the people in the trees um, and now I love this. I am a massive Hanya Fanagahara. I think her writing is amazing. So yeah, I did give this five stars, but like I say, I'll link the vlog down below. So they're the books that I've read so far in January. Thank you very much for watching. I have now moved to Storygraph. I haven't imported all my old data yet, but that is now what I'm tracking my reading on going forward. So I'll link that in the description below. If you want to follow me, my Instagram's down there. Obviously, I'd love if you subscribed and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.